Hey, what's up? My name's Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. We are starting off Tuesday on the best note that you can ever imagine. Now, everyone's heard about it. We've gotten some great feedback, and I mean really, really good feedback. I want to thank Farah for setting this up. We have, come on now, some of the DMs that I've been receiving and my assistant told me about when we just posted already started rolling in. They were like, Chase what? Chase who? Yes, Chase Damore. You know him very, very well this season, and I've been catching up on it. Uh, first season was kick-ass. Uh, Too Hot to Handle, Netflix, season two. But yet what's even more, I'm going to say profound, is Chase. You are a professional football player, and this is what everybody knows you by. But now you're recognized all over the world on Too Hot to Handle on Netflix season two. <laughs> yeah, it's it's incredible, man. Like you wake up one day and your whole life's about, you know, what time's the workouts? What are we eating today? You know, where can I get my recovery? And then you go to sleep and you wake up the next day. It's like, okay, what picture is he posting with what girl? So it's been a whirlwind, man. It's unreal, unbelievable. And I can't be more excited about it. You're, you're 24. You started in football when you were 14. Did you ever think at 14 you not only would be recognized in, in the world of sports, but now in television? But, I mean, it's even bigger. I mean, your career is like, woo. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I remember, you know, so I like I lost my dad when I was ten years old, and like I remember, you know, we always had like this dream of you know being like successful and taking care of the family at like you know whatever it costs. And you know, even when I was like fourteen, you know, just starting football, I always had like this idea of myself to you know like you know be somebody, you know, do something that could impact and leave like a lasting impact. And you know, obviously, you know, when I was fourteen, like I was a really big kid, really chubby didn't really know what I was doing, didn't know how I was going to go about life, like had no direction. And, you know, I was getting in trouble in school a lot because, you know, I was like a lost kid. And then, you know, I started, you know, meeting the right people, hanging around the right crowd. And then, you know, obviously with football, you know, continuing to play that, uh, it bettered me in school, it bettered me in the community. You know, I just started working like extremely hard. And eventually, you know, I got to a point where it's like, okay, so my decision now is like, I could continue to play football, I could do what everybody else in my small community does and, and, you know, just go straight into the workforce. And so, you know, blessed with the opportunity to go to college um, on a full ride scholarship, you know, pay zero dollars for college and, you know, you know, fast forward, you know, a couple, couple of years and then, you know, get an opportunity because of, you know, TikTok and an app to, you know, um, provide me an opportunity to go on Netflix and become like this international superstar basically overnight. And it's just, it's amazing, like how much stuff happens between, you know, then and now, if that makes sense. So when you had lost your father and, and growing up, you and your mother became really, really close and, you know, did you feel like you needed to be the man of the house at a young age? What was going through your mind, you know, leading up to later in your teenage years? Yeah, you know, like I, you know, after my pops passed away, I do have like an older brother that I don't really talk a lot about because, you know, he was more of like the, we're polar opposites, essentially. Like he's only like, you know, a year and a half older than me. And he went more down the path of like always leaving the house, always getting in trouble. So like, you know, I was there, it was me and my brother and my little sister. And I was always just like, you know, stuck looking after them. And like, obviously my mom had like a really hard time. You know, she, she went through like the whole dating phase, you know, she had like a really abusive husband at the time. And, you know, I wasn't a very big kid. So it's like, 
there wasn't much I could do other than, you know, just have like this stubborn attitude about myself that I don't care like what it's going to take. I don't care like how hard it's going to be, what trial, what tribulation, what obstacle I'm going to face. Like I'm going to, you know, my pops used to tell me, uh, keep playing. And, you know, that's why I told myself, I'm just going to keep playing and, and we're going to, you know, win this thing and we're going to, you know, come out on top. And, you know, obviously in between that, it's just it was tough, you know, especially going off to college and having to like you know leave my mom alone. She had to pack up from you know Seattle, Washington, and and move across the country all by herself. And I felt really bad about it because it's like, well, I want to be there with her, I want to help them, but at the same time, the only way I can help them is like they're gonna have to you know let me go away, let me handle business, let me take care of it, and then you know eventually at the end of this thing, I want to bring it back to them full circle. So, and you had studied in school for relationship therapy. How did that? play a key role like what led up to you studying this yeah it's crazy so like um i had never had a girlfriend in high school i never really even like talked to like that girls until honestly like my second year of college to be honest with you and um you know going into school i was like i don't know what my major is going to be like i think i want to be a cop but like everybody tells me you know if you want to you know be a cop like that's all great and stuff but like get a degree in something just in case you don't want to do that and you know i was sitting there thinking like what is something that i could do to help other people and you know a big part of that was like you know i think relationship therapy especially like in today's generation it's like so manipulated by like social media and like i feel like a lot of older um people who do it don't really have the same understanding of you know what it's like or how to deal with it is like you know potentially that i would have and you know so i was in school you know i really really like talking about you know like love languages like body language i love talking about like how the brain works and how you know it's like almost an addictive um thing to you know be attracted to somebody and it just really interested me so i kind of like ran with that i i toppled that with you know like adolescent development I'm studying that in school as well because like, you know, I had like full intentions on, you know, getting a PhD in this, becoming like a doctor and, you know, really, um, you know, leaving an impact on, you know, children's counseling um, as, as far as, you know, uh, marriage counseling as well to, you know, like try to help people um, in the best possible way that I could, you know, especially if, if football didn't work out. So do you find that you utilize those skills still chase to this day with friends or strangers or people that you meet? Oh, absolutely. The it's it's actually really funny because the things that you learn in school, like I was like, oh, like I felt like what I would learn in school, I would never apply in life. But once I got to college and I was doing things that I could actually understand, that I liked, that I enjoyed, that I could use, like I learned so many, you know, magnificent uh, traits to like talk to people. I learned how to, you know, make great eye contact. You know, we talk about like looking into, you know, the left eye of person because you know it's the most sensual part of you know having somebody um, reciprocate communication you know understanding proper um hand movement like uh, facial expressions to really come across as you know genuine i understand you know how to listen to somebody how to like you know take mental notes you know how to make people you know feel good about themselves and you know i use that you know to my advantage all the time especially when i was in college you know you know we all have that phase where you want to date everybody so you know i used it a lot you know for good and for evil if that makes sense mm. It's uh, it's emotional intelligence. I have a background in that, so that's what I hear. In oh my, yeah, and biofeedback. Yeah, it's all it's all about feedback, and you know, it's crazy about you know the whole like journey, the whole process. A lot of people don't know this about me, but you know, in 2019, uh, you know, I was essentially on my deathbed. You know, I was in the hospital. I thought, you know, the doctors thought, you know, I wasn't even gonna you know be alive here very soon because. I caught this really rare um, eating disorder in the middle of, you know, college, in the middle of like, you know, I came out of school, I was in that pro day training, but I was also still taking classes and I was just, you know, overworking my body. And, you know, I got this really r rare sick um, eating disorder or condition disease um, called achalasia, where essentially like, you know, like my esophagus um, and nerves in it, you know, died and I couldn't really you know, eat or drink or swallow or anything like that. And so I ended up, you know, losing all this weight, um, you know, six five you know i dropped down to like almost 100 and you know like 70 pounds and you know it was it was like a it was a process because it's like you know when you go through stages like that your body goes through like so many shocks and you know this kind of like what led me into you know wanting to finish my degree wanting to you know pursue football further and obviously have like this social media understanding is like you know when you go through that process you know your body starts you know shutting down like i remember like i'd go through like chills like i was having like you know vivid delusions of you know me talking to my dad and like having like all these conversations about i want 
so much in my life, but I feel like I was letting myself and everybody who believed in me down. And then the people that didn't want to see me make it, I was, you know, just proving them right. And it, that stubborn uh, fire inside of me really started to like ignite. And I was like, you know, how am I going to you know, keep playing in this situation? There's nothing I can do. And, you know, fortunately, um, they found a doctor in Europe who got the flyover. He did like an emergency um uh, gastrointestinal surgery on me or really. like basically they you know, like they cut me up and they cut all that stuff out and they make like a bunch of fake sphincters and stuff so that I could you know eat and drink again and obviously they're hydrating me up with like the IVs and stuff but you know spent quite some time in the hospital that summer really like evaluating my life evaluating um, like what I needed to do it kind of like brought me back down to earth essentially and brought me back down to my roots so that you know I could I could revisit my vision re-see like what it is that I wanted to do so and are, are, with this, Chase, are you still playing football? Is there any concern with, while playing sports of someone maybe tackling you or, or whatever in the area of your surgery? Yeah. So I remember, you know, one of the first questions I asked the doctor, I was like, what are the odds that I play football again? And, you know, they would tell me things like, you know, like typically like a normal person uh, it takes about, you know, six to eight weeks before they can lift anything over, you know, like 15 pounds. I shouldn't carry anything heavier than like a gallon, gallon of milk. Yeah. And like, I, I kind yeah, I kind of like smirked a little bit. And I was like, I looked at my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, well, good thing I'm not an average person. You know what I mean? So it's like, I like the stubbornness. And so what I started doing was, you know, I, I, you would, you know, would wait for the nurse to like leave the office room and I couldn't really move, you know, obviously they cut open your, your abs and it's like, you don't realize how much you use your abs to move until uh, you don't have them anymore. I remember I would have like my girlfriend at the time, she'd like help me out of the bed and I was like, just let me do a couple laps around the room and I'll get back in bed and stuff. And it, it used to kill me. Like it was the most, most excruciating pain that you could think of. And obviously you have like all these meds and stuff that they give you to like, you know, numb the pain. And I was like, you know, starting to spit the meds out. Cause I was like, you know, I want to feel this. I want to, I want to, I want to understand it so that I can move on from it. And like, that's the only way I feel like I personally can heal is if I really feel this. And, you know, like I felt the pain a little bit and, you know, eventually, you know, I started getting a little bit more dangerous and was trying to walk down the hall, walk back and do a couple laps. And, uh, you know, I got to the point where, you know, I got caught one day by the nurse. I was downstairs in the lunchroom trying to, trying to get some soup. And I, it was like quite a ways away. So it was like probably like a 10, 15 minute walk. And I was like so exhausted by the time I got there. And all I hear is them freaking out, paging me on the intercom. Like, we got to find this kid, blah, blah, blah. Well, anyways, they got me back to the room and I was sitting there and the nurse was like, you can't do this. Like, you need to <laughs> no rest. You need to recover. And I was just like, oh yeah, no, I'm really sorry. I don't know what I was thinking and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, basically I, I made good friends with her to the point where it was like, you know, she was like, okay, like we're trying to get you released so that you can go home. We get it. You don't need to be here for six weeks anymore. And I was like, oh, perfect. And she's like, okay, so like we got your release papers, but you have to make me a promise that you're not going to work out when you go home. I was like, oh, yeah, you have my word. I promise. I promise. And like, you know, as soon as I <laughs> left the hospital, I told my girl, I was like, yeah, just take me to the gym. So oh. I was in the I, I was in the gym. I was, I was just, you know, it started off with just like the bands uh -huh. and, and the, and the bar, like no way just to like get back into the movement. You know, it was like really heavy for me, really hard, but like, it was good because like I was able to like, you know, recover faster. I really, you know, started impacting my body. Like, you know, like I'm going to be able to play football again. Like that's what I would tell myself over and over again. Like I'm going to play, I'm going to play, I'm going to play. And like, you know, throughout that process, I never announced it to the league at the time. And so like, you know, I checked out the hospital in like August, started training August and September. Um, at the time was when like the Canadian NFL, or the CFL is like a lot of people refer to it. Um, provided me with a contract to go play for the Montreal Alouettes. Montreal Alouettes had no idea that I was even sick. Like they expected me to show up to training camp, you know, a 260 pound defensive end. I'm sitting here at like, you know, 180 pounds looking like a wide receiver can't even lift a hundred pounds. But you know, in my head, I was like, okay, now I'm on a clock. Now it's ticking. So now I got to, you know, go faster. So obviously I sped up the process of, you know, eating more food by the day, lifting more weight, so on and so forth. And, you know, by December, I was, I would say I was like a good, you know, like 85, 90% ready to go. So it all actually worked out, you know, in my favor and it bettered me because of it. Talk about resiliency. I mean, damn. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's it's crazy. Like and and what really changed it was like I I I kid you not, man. I was I was sitting there in the bed, 
and you know like delusional out of my mind dehydrated no food like i was basically you know up on 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 morphine essentially you know what they used to put you under Mm -hmm. uh you know i was like talking crazy i remember like i I still tell my mom to this day i was like i swear to god like i was talking to my dad and i was like i was i was telling him i was like pops like i feel like i let everybody down like i feel like i did not finished the job like i told you i feel like everybody put their faith in me and and i let them down you know i left school a little bit early to go to the nfl and it didn't work out right away and like you know i have all this faith in like blowing up on social media and like i have like a hundred followers and I, I have this idea of this great job but i'm laying in like a freaking hospital bed right now on on sick leave from starbucks you know and it's just like it's crazy like you know that was only a, you know a year and a half ago and, and you know you full circle that thing, you know, full swing. And it's just like how, how different life changes in such a short amount of time, just purely based on like understanding that, you know, whether you're up, you're down, like just keep playing, just keep playing. Do you feel or believe chase that you got a sense of peace with having that conversation with your dad? Yeah, I firmly believe like it brought me peace because like I said, like I was panicking, like in school, I felt so bad that I was, doing all these things like leaving my mom and my brothers and, and and trying to go do like this whole college thing and not able to like provide them money. Obviously I never asked them for money because they didn't make a lot um, at the time. And it's just like, I felt like I essentially like walked away from my family and left my mom with like this abusive person and, and my grandma and my grandfather had passed away like right after my high school graduation. So like they were all really down in the gutter. And I was just like, man, like how easy it would be to just, you know, pack all this up, and, and just go home to them because like you know like i said when i got dropped off at college like i got dropped off you know on the other side of the country with with a hundred bucks in my pocket a basket of clothes and a couple gatorades you know and it's just like well good luck chase like now you got to make new friends new connections you got to do this all by yourself and it's going to be hard and it's going to suck and it's not always going to be fun but like the times that you do have fun you just got to live in the moment and like i didn't understand that until like i had a conversation with my pops like he's like you know i get it it gets hard right now but like right now what you need to do is you need to like you know get better you need to recover and you need to get back on that exact same track because you gotta you're almost there you know what i mean like you can see the finish line you know there's you're 100 yards away from 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 being able to you know accomplish all these things that you want it's just like what would you what would you do to stop yourself and you're 100 yards away you know what i mean like you ran all this way you went this distance and you're right there you can see it like now you just got to go get it you can't stop here and like that brought a sense of calmness a sense of peace like it's not happening right this second but (laughs) there is not a person an entity an obstacle anything on this planet or the next that is going to stop me from being able to achieve these dreams and provide for these people I truly believe you did have a conversation with your father. I believe that there are many things, Chase, that people cannot explain, but I do believe, and even though you had said you were on morphine, I believe you were at the perfect time, perfect place, but your heart, not there's no but, your heart and your spirit and your soul and your intentions were all in alignment. And it just so happened, just like, you know, the way natives, you know, use certain herbs or, you know, things that people do, I believe that there was some type of celestial moment of an alignment. And you know, this with understanding, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, human intelligence and everything. I believe that we as, you know, energetic people or beings can open up certain dimensions or portals depending on a situation. So I'm going to say, once again, say to you, I believe even if someone would say, oh, well, we don't believe his dad was really there. Well, he lives through you. So even major scientists, Chase, top scientists and doctors are still trying to figure out the brain. So I do believe you had a conversation. I believe those words and those words of encouragement are real. You knew they were real. You felt that they were real. And you applied it accordingly. And look where you are at today. And you are at yeah. peace. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. Like I said, like it's it's without that conversation, I don't know. You know, without uh, you know experiencing like that sickness, like I firmly believe, like you know, at, at a certain point, I remember right before I was also, I was like, okay, like maybe maybe I should just you know 
take this nine to five job and like just go and like make some money for my family and then try to circle back on this thing, you know, in a few years. And I was, just, it was the best decision of my life to absolutely not do that, you know? And like a lot of people look at like that sickness and look at that time, I, that summer I spent in the hospital, like, like you lost the summer of your youth. And it's like, I needed that, you know, I needed to, to remember like where I came from. I needed to remember what it feels like to hurt, to have like, you know, emotional, I needed to remember what it's like to have that conversation with my dad and that it just essentially like reignited the flame. So. I'm super proud of you in, in a lot of ways. And, and once again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in live on air with Stephen Quilk on power 98.5. I want to strongly uh, reference and, and make a, a statement to Farrah Curie over there at Ingenuity Live, who the great team, they manage Chase. So we have Chase Damore from Too Hot to Handle, Netflix, season two. If you haven't watched season two yet, I encourage you to go back, start in season one and, uh, you know, catch up to season two. Or if you feel like, you know what, screw it, we don't need to do season one. We love Chase Damore. We want to, you know, we love Nathan and everyone else that we're reading and hearing about the cast and just start out with season two then. You can't go wrong. So big shout out to Farrah Curie. Are you currently with... The Houston linemen, uh, you're gonna are you doing a spring league or what's happening with this chase? Yeah, so it's actually a really really confusing concept because at the time of the release of the show, that my team was in Houston, but so basically what had happened was is um, I took a release from the Canadian NFL from the Montreal Alouettes back in February and uh, was was a free agent, like just kind of like training. I was hoping to get back in the NFL. So I got picked up by this indoor football team called the Arizona Rattlers. And I was like, you know, I don't really want to play indoor football. I feel like, you know, I have a good shot to either, you know, go back to the Canadian NFL or, you know, to the actual NFL. And um, so I like, I, I went to like one of these workouts for the, what's called the Spring League. And essentially the Spring League is this NFL development developmental uh, uh minor league essentially where you know all these ex nfl and cfl players go and play in um to have like a shot at you know getting back into the, to the regular nfl and uh you know it's it's pretty big now here in the u.s because you know obviously we play on you know fox and fox sports and all that and, and so essentially what it is is it's it's eight teams four in the north in indianapolis and four in in houston and, and my team is called the linemen and we were actually in indianapolis and we were like the new add-on team we're supposed to be like the, the 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 crappy one essentially that they put all the bad players on and we were just you know supposed to get blown out in every game and we ended up you know we lost the first game by a touchdown but after that we we beat the snot out of everybody like blew everybody out of the water and and got an opportunity to fly to houston to play the best team in houston um for the mega bowl which is essentially the super bowl of the spring league like the championship game so in the process of when the show came out i was in houston um with the linemen playing for the championship so it was very much referenced as the houston linemen but it's actually the indianapolis linemen so congratulations it's it's an accept, I mean, seriously, can it lead to the NFL? Do you believe it can be? Oh, absolutely. You know, like our team, my team especially, like I I was a starter, I was a captain um on the defense and you know we we were the number one offense as well and we played against you know the other leagues number one uh everything all the way for the championship but the week prior to that you know uh you know one team had like you know six seven guys get signed in the nfl and like still to this day everybody's you know getting picked up every other day um it's mostly cfl right now because nfl teams are out of the office but you know i feel like you know once training camp for the nfl teams start and you know guys start getting cut or hurt or whatever it is in, in the pro sports world you know and they start, you know, picking from us in the spring league. And I, I firmly believe, you know, like as a, as a leader on that team, I'd like to see that entire team go to the NFL. And I, I firmly believe that entire team can go to the NFL. And, uh, you know, I'm just hoping to be one of the guys that gets picked up as well. So what's next for you in, in the world of football? I, Cause you're hot on a track right now with a Netflix season two, too hot to handle. How are you balancing the two, because you still have training, you've got conditioning, you've got a vow you had taken, you know, uh, you know, for yourself to yourself, uh, Chase, that, you know, you want to take care of your mom, you want to take care of your family. So do you have too much pressure on you now? Or do you feel that you can balance all three of these attributes? Um, or not attributes, but opportunities, reality TV, football, and family? 
Yeah, absolutely. And and my mom, she's like, you know, my biggest fan and she knows she's like, she never worried about pressure with me because she knows I thrive in it and I love it. And it, it helps me perform better. And like, yeah, it's a lot of roles. Um, as far as your question, what's next for football is like, um, you know, I'm hoping to get into the NFL. If the NFL doesn't work out, hopefully the CFL. And then if either one of those do not work out, I already have the indoor contract that I could go back and play, you know, tomorrow if I wanted to. But, you know, the USFL is, is going to be like an, a league that was around a while ago. Um, back, you know, before it merged with the NFL and, and all that stuff happened with it. Um, it's coming back next year. So the Spring League, the league that I played in this year, all those teams are essentially going to that. It's owned by the same guy. They're all going to that. They're going to start, you know, paying us, you know, a couple hundred thousand a year to play in that league. So my team has already uh, communicated with us. If none of us are on NFL teams by the time that rolls around here in you know six, seven months, that we're all going to get you know picked up by our teams respectfully for there. So um, definitely going to be back on the field within like the next year. You know whether it's NFL, CFL, or the USFL. So lucky enough to be blessed to be put in a situation where there's so many pro football leagues. And then you know in the meantime, you know I stay on top of my training. Uh, you know, my regimen is really simple. Obviously, I'm in Miami right now. I'm working out with, you know, my best friend and one of my former teammates. Um, his name's Fabian. He's a wide receiver. I play defensive line. So he kind of has more upscale, up pace workouts that I do work out with him um, as far as that goes. Mm-hmm. So that keeps me in shape. We hit those, you know, uh, mid midday. He's actually um, at one right now. But, uh, you know, hit those midday, um, do the social media stuff in the morning and at evening time. And in the middle of the day is more of like uh, my training time. So my training recovering. So are you going to continue with reality television? Is there anything after this or what do you plan on doing? Absolutely. And, you know, it's crazy. It's like, yeah, I am under contract with Netflix. I'm not, you know. Uh, they own like my rights essentially. So it's not like I can just go hop on like MTV's the challenge or anything like that. But what's actually really funny is um, I've actually been um, offered opportunities to go on other TV shows. Like, you know, Love Island um, has reached out to me uh, multiple times. I was actually in the VIP mix to go to that before I was on two out the handle. Um, So they have obviously invited me back um, this year. I've been, you know, reached out by, you know, bachelor, uh, the bachelorette. I've been reached out, you know, by the challenge, um, and then various other like smaller TV shows. So definitely going to be, um, back in front of the screen on another reality TV, uh, here very soon. Uh, it just depends if Netflix approves it or not. Um, but you know, after like that year mark, um, I am back to being able to do whatever TV uh, I would like to do. So so when, did, if I can ask, because I know you guys are under an NDA, you have certain things you can disclose and not disclose, but is your year coming up? Like, are you saying like after a year you can, you're a free agent, basically you can go to any network? Yeah, essentially like after the last batch of episodes, you have like a year, like 12 months, I believe, where it's like you cannot um, go on to like another TV show because you are, are essentially a Netflix employee mm-hmm. um, or a Netflix actor or however you want to look at it. You are owned by Netflix. Um, so they don't want, you know, it, what makes you special, like, you know, if you were on, you know, CBS, CBS loves you for you. They don't want you going on Netflix, you know, just like if you're on MTV, they wouldn't want you going on CBS. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's all based on network. And he's just like, I'm a Netflix TV personality. So, uh, I, you know, Netflix just owns my rights. So I, I just work with Netflix exclusively and, and it's, it's perfectly fine. I, I love Netflix. Netflix treats us all really well, really great. And I would love to, you know, continue. I hope, you know, they continue to do more reality TV shows for Netflix and I'd love to be a part of each and every one of those. So. Oh, you're not going anywhere. Come on. You're going to be at the top of the roster. <laughs> you, you are, you know it. <laughs> yeah, I told him. I told him I was like, uh, cast me for Dancing with the Stars. That's the only other one I want to do. And then uh, I'll be back here on Netflix. You can put me on like All American or something. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead before we get into more great details. Chase Demore from Netflix, Too Hot to Handle season two, is with us here live on air with Stephen Quoco on Power ninety eight point five. A big shout out to Farah Curie over there at Ingenuity, who represents Chase. Nathan and many other cast members from uh, Netflix Netflix series. Uh, we're going to go ahead, Chase. We're going to play uh, a live clip of Too Hot to Handle season two, the trailer. Uh, so if you want to just go ahead and uh, take a listen with me, my team's going to put this together and 
let's hear what everyone has to say. And I'm going to tell you, I've never watched it. Sometimes I don't do things, Chase, and because I want that experience with you. So this is going to be the first time I'm watching, listening, while everyone here and around the world is listening. Too Hot to Handle Season 2, Netflix tra- trailer. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, let's hit it. Too Hot to Handle is back with a bag. Welcome to the party! We've got 10 new super hot sizzling singles. It's going to be a sexy summer, man. Usually what I look for in a guy is just like a one night hangout. For those of you who need reminding, there is to be no kissing, no heavy petting, and no sex. Yo, we are too hot to handle! This summer, we're turning up the heat. The purpose of this retreat is to help you gain more emotional connections. I will deduct money if there are meaningless flings. What? This is crazy. We're going to end up broke. How you say, uh, we're fucked in French? On est dans la merde. On est dans la merde. One, two, in, out. <laughs> There's a lot of sexual tension in the villa. Today, we're going to find your special spot. They're all guilty. Every last one of them. I feel like the little devil or an emoji right now. Oh, dear. Please forgive us, Lana. It was not our faults. So we are simply young, attractive individuals. I'm still trying to learn, trying to progress. I haven't liked someone like this in so long. That really brought like a lot of emotion that I didn't even know I had. Yeah. I feel like I haven't felt that. <laughs> Oh my God! It's not just about sex, it's way deeper. If this is what love feels like, I don't ever want to lose it. Cheers to a deep chat and cheers to deep the penetration. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I loved season one. I really, really did. This looks super amazing. Yeah, it, it was <laughs> it was once in a lifetime experience. Absolutely incredible. I can't even can't I still to this day cannot believe that I got picked to do that. <laughs> like, it's unreal. If there is one thing, Chase, that you had the opportunity to really learn about yourself and be like, oh my god. I am like super proud of who I am or whatever it may be. What was that one thing? Or if there was more, because sometimes, you know, you can have several things rolled up in one that could be one thing. What are you most proud of to find out about yourself? That, you know, honestly, to be honest with you, like I, I, when I was a kid, like I said, like I went to the school where everybody just kind of did, did the same thing generation after generation, like the type of school. It's like, oh, I remember when your mom was here. Oh, your grandma used to work here. You know, essentially like that. It's like, I think my proudest moment was was just showing the kids and showing everybody in that community worldwide even that, you know, it, it's possible. Like sometimes I feel like it's just – it's about showing people like it can be done. You don't always have to be born with like a silver spoon or, you know, like anything like that. And I always told myself, like, give me like the worst, give me the worst deck of cards, the worst hand you can give me. And like, let me play, you know, let me see what I can do with it. And I think my proudest moment was, uh, you know, essentially, you know, coming out, you know, I was on women's health magazine and, and then trending and just being internationally known like worldwide as, as this football player, as this kid from like this small, this small town. And I think at that point it was just like, wow, I really, I really did that. You know, like that's gotta be one of my prouder moments of my life. And then obviously, you know, making, you know, a good revenue stream out of this. Like I, I just, you know, paid my mom's bills off, you know, a couple of days ago and I, and I tweeted about it. And I just, I remember when I sent her the money, I sat there for a second and she told me, no, she's like, it's way too much. And like all this and that. And I, I kind of like sat there by myself and like I had like a tear shut from my eyes. It's like, wow, I, I really did that. Like I really did that. And, you know, you, you, like money could never pay for, for a feeling like that. So I can truly foresee you hosting on ESPN. Like you have an incredible, incredible. I can understand, Chase, someone calling you a young man, but I see, I hear a man. Okay. 
within you. And when I have the opportunity in the moments that I have had with listening to you, uh, getting to know you, reading the information your representatives have sent over to me, looking over your Instagram, you have such a strong presence as a Gen Z. And you are going to do many, many transformational things in your future. Seen, unseen, spoken, unspoken. You are a, you're like a tower, a cell tower. You know how to send information out. You know how to receive information, but you also know how to translate information for other people and that greater understanding going back to your education. So be prepared. I, what you're hosting shows, you, you on ESPN, all the above. You're going to continue to touch people's lives. Yeah, that's all I can hope for. That's all I want to do. I just want to, I just want to show people like, yeah, you have a voice. Use it. Speak. <laughs> that's all I want for people. I want to thank everyone for tuning in live on air with Stephen Quickle on Power 98.5. Chase DeMore from Too Hot to Handle Season 2. We're going to come now into some golden nuggets we're going to be dropping. First, tell us about your merch and oh, where man. can we go? Oh, man. Like, I'm super excited to finally announce that I do have the Team Chase merch on the way dropping on July 23rd this Friday. Uh, super easy. I have the links in all my social media bios. It's shopchasethemore.com. Shirts, hoodies, t-shirts, uh, sweatshorts, whatever, hats, all the good stuff. I'm super, super excited to see what, what I can provide to you guys. You kind of got a price point offhand at all, what we can look at? I mean, we're... Uh, I actually don't have the, uh, the prices. Um, I, don't, I don't set those. Uh, I just kind of like design the merch. I design the gear. I kind of like set how it looks like and I do like all the promo for it. I do the, the photo shoots. It's all me. Um, but I have a newsletter to sign up. It'll give you like all that information. I'm actually um, in a contest right now for a giveaway. I'm going to be selecting a handful of people to get some signed gear from me sent to them um, personally. So very exciting all you have to do to enter is just drop your email inside the inside the newsletter shopchasemore.com thing and then you're entered to win so drop the website one more time again chase uh shopchasemore.com that's s h o p e s c h a s e d e m o o r.com now podcast now you got to go into details about that is it just podcasting you looking to go into podcasting take it into radio what are the goals here yeah so i just you know um very upcoming youtuber i uh, love to post youtube videos doing really well on there but i'm going to be uh, tying in a podcast to my youtube that i'm in the works of setting up essentially my plan is to bring in you know um, social media celebrities tiktokers and athletes and talk everything from the sports world to the social media world since i'm so connected to both of them um, get all the drama all the details all of the what's in the now um, the podcast uh, hopefully will be set up by next month. Um, getting that thing cruising is going to be super fun, super exciting, and lots more screen time for me to talk to all the beautiful uh, faces out there. So, Hey, you ever need a, a guest like me or sharing any tidbits and insights or whatever it may be, you know, blowing a whistle, being the, the PR wiki leaks of the industry, you let me know. I would love to have you. I would love to have you out there. <laughs> Seriously, well, you got my direct private number, so you call me and reach out anytime. Also, uh, do, do you want to drop? Uh, you've got Unruly, you got Celsius. Where do you want to go with oh. this? Yeah, so yeah, I've just you know signed a contract with Unruly. If you don't know what Unruly is, it's like um, the most upscale um, social media type management. They work directly with like things like OnlyFans. I'm gonna be like working with like OnlyFans TV. Um, a lot of behind the scenes of my life, um, going up on my OnlyFans exclusive pictures. Um, and like just basically my day to day life that I can't post on like other social media platforms without you know. It, getting like obviously banned or shut down or something. Um, but Unruly will be directing all of that, setting up photo shoots, setting up, you know, um, time to you know meet with fans, meet and greet, so on and so forth. Um, I'm also in Miami for the week. I will be going to the Celsius VIP event um, here on Thursday, I believe. Uh, we'll be there all day as well as um, Rolling Loud Music Festival this weekend. So lots of big things happening this week. 
Now with the unruly, uh, are you going to be like, is the content PG? Is it PG 13? Like what, what would be going out there? Uh, it's like PG 13. It's not, it's not going to be, it's not going to be any rated R content. I hate to disappoint all the beautiful faces out there, but, uh, not, it's not, that's not my taste. That's not for me. Um, but it will be a lot of like in-depth, like personal things that a lot of people are going to have access to, like, you know, special happy birthdays. Um, I'm going to be talking about, you know, like drama relationships, things that are going on in my life that I won't talk about on like other social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, so it'll be really great. I'm going to be doing like a lot of live TVs. I'm going to be doing a lot of like talking to people in my DMS that I miss on Instagram or Twitter or any other platform. I'm going to be, um, you know, obviously there are going to be shirtless pictures on there. So you're welcome ladies. Um, there will be boxers and all that stuff on there for you guys as well. But I will also be repping, um, my underwear and like, all the stuff that I can't show on like other uh, social media platforms. So isn't that something like you're, you're out there, you're, you know, how many, you can't even show your underwear. I mean, how many billboards have we've seen since the 1980s, you know, rocking celebrities in their underwear? Like what's the big fucking deal? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, man. I'm like, I'm like man, like <laughs> you're young, they're young, they're horny, they want to do all these things. I'm like, well, I'm just sitting here in my boxers. I can't post this on TikTok. Like, I'm mm -hmm. really sorry. I honestly don't think, and, and if no one's told you this, I'm going to tell you this. You have the right reps. You have the right people by your side. I know you're going to do what you want to do, and it is your career and your reputation, Chase. So you you are to take the responsibility of making a final decision. But I'm going to tell you, I really believe that you're too sophisticated. You're too smart. And no matter how you look, yes, you look incredible. I do not believe you will be cheapened by what you decide to do. I'm, I don't know what other people can do, but I truly believe that no matter what, underwear, shirtless, no matter what it is that you happen to do, you will keep your integrity. And I guarantee you, you will, because going back to that conversation you had with your father, you will always remember that your rep, what you, what you're doing now and how your reputation is paying the bills and how powerful in this position in which you've been granted, I am very confident you're going to be responsible, mature and sophisticated. Yeah, I'm going to work my tail off too. You best believe that I'm too stubborn <laughs> to just go out quietly. I know you <laughs> I'm going to work my tail off. Uh, you already <laughs> are my friend. Is there any shout outs that you would like to give? Uh, you know, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my mom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, thank your mom. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to thank my mom. And like, honestly, um, Katie, I know you guys don't know who Katie is, but uh, I said it in one of like the IGTVs. Uh, I accidentally called uh, Chloe from season one, Katie. But mm -hmm. Katie, I want to give her a very special shout out because she reached out and she casted me um, for Two Out the Handle. And I kind of like blew her off at first. I was like, ah, this is not something I really want to do. And she was really persistent with me. I'm really glad she did because she changed my life. Um, also, you know, I want to give a big shout out to like my high school, uh, Edenville High School. You know, you guys, I didn't show you guys a lot of love that I should, but like, absolutely, those are my roots, those are my grounds. I want to show some up there. Um, and then as well as the rest of my my amazing ingenu ingenuity live team, um, they're all amazing. Farah, uh, stays up all night sometimes with my ridiculous questions always helping me um you know mel nicole jeff all the guys on the uh, on the team like they're absolutely the most unreal group of people and then obviously uh nikki and tara over there unruly um you know they don't take a lot of uh, male clients on and so i'm very thankful to be one of the few so i'm proud of you where is the best uh, you know, social media go to, uh, to connect with you and be all a part about uh, Chase Demore. Yeah. I'm big on, on Instagram, um, at Chase Demore. I post, uh, you know, every Monday I do like the whole confessional. So just confess your sins to me guys. Um, I'm going to start like, you know, the whole love doctor thing here on Thursdays, mm. uh, on my stories. I'm talking to people on the lives all the time. Um, I try to respond to as many DMs as I can. People are always shocked that I reply and I follow back. Um, I'm also really big on Twitter, um, at chase the more as well. I go on Twitter every day. I like everybody's messages that at me, I'm always retweeting. I'm always talking back to as many people as I can on there as well. 
Um, and then Snapchat, I post like my day to day life on Snapchat. So um, Snapchat's the only one that's not at Chase the More. Snapchat is at HBK underscore Chase. It's the only different one. But yeah, all my all my social media platforms, like try to connect with everybody as much as possible. Well, I just connected with you like the way everyone else here and around the world should. I just started following you now on Instagram. Perfect. I'm going to give you that follow back as soon as we're off this phone. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And Chase, hold the line. I want to thank everyone for tuning in live on air with Stephen Quoke on Power 98.5 with Chase Damore, 24-year-old professional football player. You will be catching him in the NFL. If not, then you know what? Someone needs to really give a smackdown to whoever's in charge over there at the NFL for not taking him on. But, uh, yeah, you know, Washington Redskins, Steelers, 49ers, you know, I can pitch you on any Eagles, on any one of those teams. Or what actually would be your go-to team if you could get get on there? Oh, man, I've had dream- I, I want to play for one of the four corners. Uh, uh, the Seattle Seahawks, obviously, that's the home really? team. I had a yeah, I had to work out with them um, coming out of college. If not them, I would like to go down to L.A., play for the Rams. If not the Rams, then the Dolphins. If not the Dolphins, then up there with the Giants in New York. So I'd like to – one of the four corners of the United States, I'd like to be uh, over there on one of those premier teams. Incredible. So I was all the way to the right, and you went all the way to the left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey, a West guy coast by nature. I'm sorry. It's our, but <laughs> Hey, listen, if someone's going to give you a great contract – with a bunch of zeros, I'm sure you're going to make an exception. <laughs> whoever, whoever, <laughs> whoever is lucky enough. <laughs> lucky and smart enough. Exactly. Chase, any any other final thoughts? Anything else you want to include that we may not have covered? Any event? Anything else you want to drop? Uh, no, I think that's that's a lot. I got a lot going on right now. I'm, I'm super thankful for you having me on, and uh, you know, I hope to talk to you real soon. I appreciate that, Chase. Hold the line. I want to thank my team. Uh, thank everyone for tuning in today. Uh, drop any questions or comments you have in the DMs on the Power ninety eight point five Instagram. Uh, send an email, whatever it may be. You know, give us any any thoughts. We will be having Chase back on again. Uh, we will be having Nathan from Too Hot to Handle season two coming up very very soon. And I'm looking forward to you, Chase, uh, keeping me abreast of what's going on. I definitely want to attend an event, come on down, pop some bottles, bring my cameras, and, you know, let's make it a VIP Oscars moment. Let's do it. I'm down. I'm happy to have you. (laughs) Tune in. Uh, We Let's see, today's Tuesday. We are going to air this uh, Wednesday and Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Chase Damore, live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5.